Hey cadets, with Bitcoin's price rising to a historic high of over $60,000, more and more people are looking for ways to invest in cryptocurrencies, while people that already have some crypto holdings want to diversify and invest into other projects that they support. This is where exchanges as intermediaries between cryptocurrencies and investors come into play. There are two types of exchanges, centralized and decentralized. We will talk about their pros and cons a bit later on, but first, let's define them. Centralized exchanges are platforms where you can buy cryptocurrencies in exchange for your fiat currency or exchange one cryptocurrency for another. They are run by a single company that facilitate any action on the exchange. Decentralized exchanges, on the other hand, are platforms where the supply and demand meet freely and without any intermediaries. So now that we learned that some exchanges function like companies while others have a different set of goals, I'm sure you're asking yourself, which type of exchange is better and how do they even make money? Let's learn all about it. I'm Captain Crypto and welcome to Cryptonauts. Cryptonauts. The best representatives for centralized exchanges are Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken. Binance is by far the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by volume, often passing $30 billion in daily trading volume. Binance is the middle ground between user friendliness and trading features. Coinbase, on the other hand, is more of an entry-level exchange. Lastly, Kraken is an exchange aimed at users with more trading experience and offers a lot of advanced trading features. Centralized exchanges are currently the most popular type of exchange, and for good reason. First off, they are a gate into the crypto world as users can exchange their hard-earned money into cryptocurrency. They are usually the first crypto platform any user faces. Most of these platforms are geared towards users without much trading knowledge, so their main feature is their ease of use. On top of that, since centralized exchanges are led by companies, they choose which cryptocurrencies they support. While that may limit the number of cryptocurrencies you can invest in, exchanges do this in order to offer their users only the best cryptocurrencies out there. Listing a cryptocurrency on a popular exchange is an expensive process that takes a lot of time, as well as the exchange's approval. However, centralized exchanges are by no means perfect, as they all have their disadvantages. First and foremost, they have a large problem with handling their users' privacy. Centralized exchanges act as a bridge between the fiat and crypto world, which is why they are always under the watchful eye of regulators. Coinbase is the prime example of this, as the platform even had to send out all of their users' info to the US government. On top of that, centralized exchanges are the most vulnerable target in the crypto ecosystem. They have been subject of various hacks that left users with empty wallets, unfortunately. There's a saying in the crypto world, not your keys, not your crypto. As centralized exchanges hold your funds in your stead, you are not the owner of the wallet private keys. As a great amount of funds being held in the same place, hackers often target the exchanges instead of individual owners. 2019 saw a record number of crypto exchange hacks in one year as 12 exchanges got hit by hackers. However, it is important to say that the exchanges are becoming a safer place, but it is still not advised to hold your funds on their wallets for an extended period. Now that we covered their pros and cons, we can finally talk about the interesting part. How do centralized exchanges actually make money? Well, they have several ways to generate revenue. These include commissions, listing fees, market making, fund collection, and the exchange of native tokens. Commissions are the most straightforward way exchanges make money. They charge a fee, usually 0.1% on every trade. While that doesn't sound like much, many exchanges boast daily volumes that surpass tens of billions of dollars, thus making this way of generating revenue quite important. Many exchanges also introduce their native tokens that are used to reduce trading fees. However, the exchange holds most of the coins and can earn a profit by unloading them when needed. Market making is also a part of how exchanges earn a profit, but not many people know how this works. In essence, companies buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their own exchange at slightly less desirable prices than on other exchanges. 
Once a trade occurs on their exchange, they place a better price order on another exchange, thus earning a bit of money. We also mentioned that centralized exchanges require a fee for token listings. While such things don't happen often, well-known exchanges are known for charging millions of dollars in order to list a certain token on their exchange. Lastly, large centralized exchanges serve as repositories for people to buy tokens during a token offering. During the process, the exchange charges a percentage fee for the service it provides. According to a Bloomberg report, centralized crypto exchanges make as much as $3 million per day in profit with Binance and Upbit leading the way. Now that we learned how centralized exchanges operate and make money, let's learn about decentralized exchanges. Decentralized exchanges or DEXs are getting more and more popular as time passes and as the traditional finance sector faces many difficulties. These exchanges are nothing more but non-profit platforms where supply and demand for certain cryptocurrencies meet. They are more safe and secure as they aren't operated by a single company or entity. Because of this, each user holds the keys to their own wallet, making it impossible for hackers to operate. On top of that, regulators cannot simply ask this company's CEO for user information as decentralized exchanges don't require users to verify their identity, nor do they have a CEO. DEXs also offer a wide array of cryptocurrencies as anyone can list their own project for free. Decentralized exchanges reach the spotlight of the finance sector due to the fact that they are not a subject of regulation nor any possible shady business done by the company heads. The situation with the Robinhood trading platform and the GameStop stock made it clear that while nothing illegal necessarily happened, traders got stuck holding a stock that they wanted to sell, which would not have happened if they were trading on a decentralized platform. Of course, decentralized exchanges are less popular than centralized for a reason. They have their own set of disadvantages which hold them back from becoming market behemoths like Binance or Coinbase. First of all, decentralized exchanges offer no fiat support, meaning that users can trade their cryptocurrencies for one another, but they can't buy crypto with their fiat currency. On top of that, DEXs have less optimized interfaces that aren't usually as user-friendly as ones that most centralized exchanges have. On top of that, due to them being smaller exchanges, DEXs suffer from low trading volumes, which may increase the chance of price slippage from occurring. I know, I know, decentralized exchanges sound like a mess, but they are improving at a rapid pace and are solving many of their problems. Uniswap is one of the exchanges that changed the game for DEXs with its many improvements. The exchange is very user-friendly and responsive, meaning that traders don't need to worry about slow loading pages and unintuitive interfaces. On top of that, Uniswap solved its liquidity problem by using automated market makers or AMMs. This both solved the liquidity problem of exchanges and introduced a new way for traders to earn passive income. Now that we know how DEXs work, let's see how they make money. Well, the truth is, if they are truly decentralized, they don't. While there are shades and flavors of decentralization, truly decentralized exchanges generate no revenue and are completely non-profit. Some DEXs, however, take a tiny bit of trading fees or charge small token listing fees to fund their developers. So, the main question now is, which type of exchange is better? While it is true that using centralized exchanges makes crypto lose its purpose, we can't run away from the fact that everyone needs to buy crypto somehow, and that centralized exchanges are the easiest way to do so. However, there is no denying that decentralized exchanges are the future of financial markets, and that everyone who thinks about using crypto should at least learn about them a little bit. Before we sign off, I'd like to once again point out that holding funds on exchanges for a long period of time might be dangerous and that people should use them just for buying or exchanging crypto rather than as wallets. We hope this video helps clear up some confusion about exchanges. And remember, not your keys, not your crypto. If you like this type of content, let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. This is Captain Crypto signing off. Until next time, HODL! Secure crypto and may Satoshi and Vitalik be with you always.